How's it everyone? This is Lokahol and in today's video I'm going to be sharing more tips on getting through the campaign more quickly but in this episode it's going to be Acts 6 to 10. If you haven't seen the previous video check the description and the pinned comment it'll be linked there. I'm glad everyone has been enjoying it so far. First things first, a lot of people had a question about this. Why did I suggest the make your character fall asleep strategy instead of dropping a portal and then logging out and coming back in? This will cause your portal to close. So if we open this portal and then we go exit to character selection screen and then we log back in on the same character, that portal is going to be gone. So that is why we do the go to sleep method. I'm obviously saying that for YouTube, but yeah. Anyway, that out of the way, let's hop straight into Act 6. So in the Act 6, we're going to head this way. We're looking for the Dishonored Queen to get her little Eye of Conquest. I normally just head straight up for this wall and then find her house. Very easy to find usually. You'll see her in her house. Then we grab her eye and then we head down into the left. I'm starting to think of describing things as screen left and screen right. But for now, yeah. So we go screen up and right and then the exit will be here. But the Karui Fortress also going to be a very, very simple layout. Hug this right wall. This will lead you straight to Tukahama's little fortress over here. We're going to head in here. Kill Tukahama. I don't think I'd have to kill him again. Kill then we're going to pop out this side. Be careful. There's usually a pack of monsters waiting outside on this. So be careful. And then head up and to the... This way. So just hug that left hole. We'll pop you out at the ridge. At the ridge. Not many tips. But there is a reference to Dark Souls. That's cool. In the Prisoner's Gate. We're going to have to find that ridge again. Same one as in Act 1 because we want to do the Abarath quest. So we're going to hop down, go into this canyon, and then find the entrance to Abarath's thing. So again, you can just hug the wall. That usually works. Kill some stuff along the way. Don't miss out on XP. Valley of the Fire Drinker, kill Abarath. Then you can either take a TP to town and take that waypoint. I usually just run back. And from here, we're going to find this road. And similar to Act 2, we're just going to follow this road to the Western Forest. Now, in Act 2, in the first half of the campaign, we opened this area with the Thormetic Emblem and we killed these guards. And now look, there are zombies. So from this point onward, a lot of areas are going to have the similar to Act 2, follow the road to find the next zone. So we're gonna just follow this road. This will take us to the riverways. Same thing in here, follow the road. And we're going to be looking out for the waypoint once we find that. Here we go. Waypoint. Similar with Oak. It's the same area. It's just in the future. We're going to find these two broken pillars. Follow this little broken road. Obviously, look at your mini map. It should be obvious. And this will lead us to the wetlands. We're going to the wetlands to kill Rislatha. That grants us another passive point. For this area, I like to just hug this left wall. And it should lead us to the spawning grounds very easily. Here we go. Spawning grounds, kill Rislatha, and then we're going to follow this road again. We're going to follow it all the way up to what was previously the entrance to the bridge encampment, but now it is overrun and blocks off. So once you get here, just go down and to the right, down and to screen right. This will pop us out in the Southern Forest. Southern Forest. Now this area, I recommend trying to stay as close to this screen right hand side wall. There might be some lanes we need to hop over. Sometimes you can reach across like that. If you can't quite reach it, then find the little bridges over here. And keep thinking screen right. And then once you find this big mountainous wall, that means you're going in the right direction. We should find the entrance to the caverns. What were once Mervale's caverns. Here we go. Cavern of Anger. Now, this area, maybe it does have a trick to it. I do sort of follow the water again. 
I normally go screen right for this zone. But sometimes you can get a bit lost. I feel sort of in the middle of screen right. If someone's got a better way of explaining this, please do let me know. But this is how I think of it. Sort of screen right. Yeah, there's the beacon. I'm not sure how helpful that is, but I do think it's usually on this side of the screen. So I try to avoid going up too much, but the layout does change. Tiny tip for the beacon, which is otherwise a very straight zone. You can hop up these little areas. And then once you make it to the top of the beacon, you can kind of stand up here and flame dash all the way down like that. You don't have to go up and down these stairs. Sort of stand in this corner, flame dash down. Talk to Waylam. Sail to the Brian King's Reef. Now this area, I like to hug this screen right wall. Once you get a bit more confident, you don't have to do a hard hug. You can sort of just go straight and keep it in your periphery and sort of get a feel for how far down it is. But if you're not confident, just hug that screen right hand wall and make your way down. There's plenty of mobs in here, lots of magic and rare packs. So you're getting a lot of experience along the way. And then once you find this little break, which should be right here, I think. Yeah. So in this case, we could have gone, I guess, hug that side of the wall. So maybe for this area, if you do want to go really fast, just hug one of the walls. Like I said, there's plenty of experience along the way. Heading into Act 7, this is going to be similar to Act 2, where you see a road, follow it. It will take you to your destination. There is a quest here for Waylam's Locket. If you want to go off the beaten path, you do find a little ruined castle looking thing. If you do that, I think you can get a granite flask or something nice, but otherwise that is optional. Just follow this road. It will take you straight to the crossroads where we are now. Now in the crossroads, we have this waypoint, which we want to grab right in the middle here. If we go up this way, it's going to take us to the Chamber of Sins. If we go down this way, it'll take us to the Felshrine ruins where we get Malagaro's map. I always get this waypoint, then get Malagaro's map, and then head up to the Chamber of Sins. But you don't have to worry about going that way, down that way. Instead, so just... Yeah. Alright, let's check out the Chamber of Sins. So for Malagaro Sanctum, I'm not going to be able to run it because I've completed on this character, and I'm not going to run another character straight to Act 7 just to show this. But for Malagaro Sanctum, there are little bridges that connect zones to one another. I normally will try and make a beeline for the bottom right corner or one of the corners. It's sort of three diamond shaped areas stuck together and they're attached at the corners. So I'll normally head down and right. And if I find the corner there, I'll go up and right and then find another little bridge in the corner. But for that area, just try and check out the corners because that's usually where you're going to find the bridge. And then similarly, in the Chamber of Sins level 1, same as in Act 2, this will point you in the direction of the exit. So wherever you see the waypoint, that'll point in the direction of level 2. Ashenfields, same thing. Follow this road, it'll take you to the Groost fight. So the Northern Forest has another portal drop trick for us. We're going to have to do the Dread Thicket to find the Fireflies for Yina. So I normally just go down in this direction and find the entrance for the Dread Thicket. Sometimes it does spawn in a weird space, but normally it's sort of fairly in line with the waypoint. So here I will drop a portal and then I will continue my way up to either the causeway waypoint or if i'm feeling a bit speedy the val city waypoint but for now let's just pretend we made it there now the val city i'm sure many of you hate this area i do too but again there are plenty of magic and rare packs along the way so if you do get lost in here it's not usually too bad but the only way i think about this is to find this big thick wall so there's these little thin walls and then there's this big chunky wall which you can see here on the map it looks like this and it is covered with plants i will usually try and follow that as much as possible if anyone does have tips for this area do let me know but this is what i do and it usually works out all right 
There we have lost our thick wall. Now I'm looking for another thick wall. Here's one, which is covered in trees. So I will follow this thick wall. It's still a thick wall over here. And here is the exit. That doesn't always work, but it's at least some kind of guide that should help you. Now from here, either here or the causeway, we head back to town, take that portal to the dread thicket, and then we will get the fireflies, go back to the waypoint to the Vile City, and open our way to the Temple of Decay. Now, similar to the Ancient Pyramid in Act 2, we are looking at this sort of like a diamond-shaped area with the exit opposite. This is actually the same place, but in the future as the Ancient Pyramid, which is why it's got a similar layout. So we go down this way. I'm just thinking opposite, so I'm thinking straight down from that exit. And we should find the exit right over here, like that. So as you can see, sort of sort of makes a straight line, but at least the corners are opposite. And there we go. Now the same thing for here. We see this corner over here. So we know it's sort of going to be in this direct up direction. Yeah. Here we go. Temple of Decay, level 2. You can see straight in line with this one. Temple of Decay, level 2, same thing. Gonna see, okay, this is the corner, so it's gonna be opposite here. However, there are some other tricks in this area. Sometimes you find a little broken bridge. You can traverse across that if you have a movement skill. So let's see if we can find one. Here, for example, we can leap slam across here and keep going in this direction. And once again, exit pretty much directly in line with the entrance. And once again, directly opposite. Now for this final level, it's not gonna be quite opposite, but I'm thinking up and to the left, so the corner of the screen, we should find the entrance, which should be here. So in this area, it's a bit more purple. You know, it's the area leading up to Arakali. And here we go. We have found her. Now in the toxic conduits, we can either go up and to the left or down and to the right. There is sometimes this little splooch on the ground. I don't know what you call this. It's sometimes quite hard to see. But if you do see this thing here that little black splash of goop or paint or whatever, you know that that means it's going to be this direction. If that was over here, we would go down, but I see this little gloop over here, so I know it's this way. Now, once we get to this junction, tiny pro tip, but you can flame dash through this grate. So just flame dash through it. You don't have to go all the way around. You save yourself milliseconds, like a true speedrunner. Now, once we've slain Doadre, we're going to pop out and get this waypoint. I always go up and to the right to the grain gate. I never go the other way. I actually haven't been that way for ages. This grate we cannot flame dash through, sadly. So you do have to go all the way around. And now let's enter the key. I kept calling it the grain gate. It's the key. Now, this is a very large area. A lot of people can get quite lost in here. What I do is hug this screen left wall on this side, and there should eventually be a break that crosses and leads us into an area where we find the little Ank of Eternity over here. You see it? So don't immediately start going this way. First, hug this screen left wall. Once you've found this, Keep going in this direction. I, again, sort of hug this wall, but I don't go in any of these little weird offshoots. We're sort of looking for an area either down, as far down as possible, and to the right, or as far down as possible to the left. It's gonna spawn in one of those two areas. So I'm just going straight down. Okay, can't go anymore. So yeah, all the way down and to the right. That's gonna be the resurrection site. Now, once we've done that, we've revived and then re-killed Tolman. The grain gate is usually going to be up and to the right, sort of northeast. So we go that way. 
It should be just over here. We can hop across, hop across. And is it here? No. Yes, it's over here. So for this area, the TLDR, once coming out, you're going to hug that left wall, find the Ankh of Eternity, then head as far down as possible. And then the resurrection site's either going to be on the right or the left. Once you've done that, then you're kind of going to go northeast-ish to find the entrance to the Grain Gate. Now the Grain Gate, also a very sprawling area, but there is an excellent trick here. So there are all these buildings and you might not know which one to go in. This one, I instantly know I don't need to go in here. And you might be wondering, how do you know? Let me show you. So outside some of these entrances, you are going to find a dead black guard. So you can see over here, there is an unfortunate sleeping soldier. He seems to have dropped his papaya on the ground. If you see one of these sleeping guards, you know this is an area you must go in. So comparing that with here, there are no sleeping guards outside, so we don't go in there. We only go in the ones where there is a, a sleeping guard. And we're going to keep doing that for this area. Don't forget to kill the Gemling Legion. This will grant us a passer point. It's super easy to do. It's along the way. And then we're going to keep looking for entrances with sleeping guards. So this one, no sleeping guard. This one, no sleeping guard. This one, here is a sleeping guard. Seems to be missing his legs, but I think he's all right. So we go in there. Here's another sleeping guard. So we go in here. And this should be the entrance to the Imperial Fields. Now, same thing, Imperial Fields, follow the road. Eventually the road will break up and disintegrate, but then you're just going to keep going in that same direction. So over here, it kind of falls apart, but then you keep following that same direction. will lead you straight to the entrance of the Solaris Temple Level 1. Now the Solaris Temple, not an exact science, but it's got a fairly similar-ish layout. I usually follow these carpets, the primary ones that keep going. First thing we need to do in here, preferably is find the waypoint which is usually around here ish yeah it's kind of an area that i've just got a feel for where the waypoint is sort of does like a little wiggle it's sometimes in a different place but don't worry if you do get lost and miss this waypoint it's okay so if you do get the waypoint head up this way up and to the left north east and this will lead you straight to the solaris temple level two Apparently not. Maybe it's more like here. Yeah. There we go. In the Solaris level 2, you just follow this carpet to the next area. I think sometimes you can get a nice little skip. I did refresh this zone a few times. Maybe it's in the normal Solaris temple. Sometimes you'll come out here and there'll be another walkway on this side that cuts out a large portion of this. Correct me if anyone knows what I'm talking about. And if you do get that, you can kind of hop across, cut a lot of this area. But for now, just follow the carpets and then continue on. Now, once we've done the Solaris level two and completed the sun orb, we're going to sort of return back down to this intersection. This is that intersection where you sort of know the waypoint is up into this way. We're going to keep going this way. Now, if you somehow went straight this way and completely missed the waypoint, don't stress. Everything's okay. Instead of going, oh no, the Solaris Concourse is here and I didn't get the waypoint, what you're going to do, drop a portal here, and then we're going to head through to the Solaris Concourse. So after dropping that portal down in the Solaris Temple, grab this waypoint, it's usually straight down, and then you can go to the Solaris Temple level one and complete that zone. Or if you're feeling speedy, you can rush all the way to the bathhouse, get that waypoint and go back. So after popping out of the harbor bridge on this side, what you want to do is go straight up ahead and grab the waypoint. We're going to need to come back here. But once you've done that, we're going to go down and to the left. This will lead us to the bathhouse. But yeah, make sure you grab this waypoint first. You'll be absolutely kicking yourself if you don't get it first. Then we're going to pop into the bathhouse. 
Now the bathhouse has multiple points of interest in it. We have a trial, we have a waypoint, we have the entrance to the high gardens. These are each going to spawn sort of in corners. So you can, I normally just rush straight for the middle. Well, I used to because I wanted to get that quest for the conqueror's efficiency over here, but well, that's not in the game anymore. So now what you can do is just check the corners of the area. Here is the trial. Definitely want to be doing that. And now I'm guessing the High Gardens is going to be around here-ish. Yeah. High Gardens? Cool. You can go straight in there. You don't actually need to worry about the waypoint. But if you do find the waypoint, which should be maybe in this bottom corner. Yeah. There it is. In that bottom corner. So let me just show you again. Just so this area makes a bit more sense. But it's sort of like a big square. And in each corner there is something. So here is the entrance, or at least the entrance into the bathhouse. And then here is another corner in which we find the grand promenade and the waypoint. Over here is the high garden entrance and over there. So check the corners, see what you need to do. Normally this area is big enough that you'll run into something, but yeah. Let's head on to the next area. So the Lunar Temple 2, just follow this carpet-ish until you get to level two, shouldn't be too hard to find. Now there is another little trick here in the Lunaris Temple level two, which will be the last trick for act eight. First set of stairs, second set of stairs, and the third set of stairs. This is the final set of stairs that you're gonna find. And similar to act three, in act three, we had two broken carts on one side and one broken cart on the other side. The side with one cart was the correct direction. Now in this area, we have a similar trick, except we have these vases or flower things. On the one side, we're going to have two. On this side, we're going to have one. And same as in Act 3, we want to go in the direction where there is only the one flower pot. So this way, let me show you, will be a dead end. Dead end, same as in Act 3. And the side with only one, this will be the correct direction in which to go. Heading into the descent in Act 9, this area, the hoists seem to spawn sort of in the corners. So for this first zone, I will go up and to the right. I'll usually find it there. And then it's going to be down and to the left. Like that. Yeah, down and to the left. It's just diagonally. And this side, let's just see. Okay, I'm going to sort of head up and to the right again. This area isn't too bad, but just think of it as diagonals. So let's kill these monsters. First area up into the right. Second area down into the left. Third area up into the right. It's actually the same direction, but you're just doing it opposite. So this way and then this way and then this way. Give it a try. See if it helps you out in this area. It's usually not too hard to figure out. The Vastiri Desert, pretty big area. I'll normally come out of here just going dead straight. What we want to do is find the waypoint. We want to find the storm thing, the storm chest. And then we want to find the entrance to the oasis. So this area, I normally run around. And again, there's lots of cool stuff in here. Lots of things to kill. Also. There's a betrayal encounter, but grab that waypoint. Now from the waypoint, if we go directly this way, we should find the entrance to the foothills. Yeah, over here, but we're not gonna go here yet. First, there is something we need to do. Firstly, we need to find that storm weathered chest. I'm not sure if there is an exact spawn place for it. Sometimes I feel like it's up here. Sometimes I feel it's down there, but let's see. We can just look around. While we're here, if you bump into this oasis, what we want to do, drop a portal, another portal drop area, but then head back and try find that storm weathered chest, which is right over here. We're going to do this quest, get the blade piece and then head back. So usually what you would want to do is do that first, then go to the oasis, drop that portal, and then you can either come out of here or just run straight to the foothills. Now the foothills hug this right hand wall. We're looking for the waypoints, which we should find here. Yep. 
So we're going to take this waypoint back to town. We're going to hand in the blade that we got from the storm weather chest. And then we're going to get the bottled storm from Sin and then take the portal through to the oasis. We're going to do that first. Alternatively, if you want to go fast, you can run all the way, I think, to the quarry, grab these two waypoints along the way, then use that. But once you have done that quest and collected the passive point for killing Shakira, you can take this waypoint and then we're going to head up and to the right. This will lead us to the entrance to the tunnels. I'm just thinking up and to the right for here. Yeah. And once you find this little area, you know, all right, we found the tunnel. Tunnel, we are going to have to find the lab trial here. Usually it spawns fairly close to the start. So don't go too deep. I usually find it's either to the left or the right. But once you see this little book, you know, all right, lab trial, go do that. Make sure you're doing your lab trials along the way. And then I similarly to act for think north east ish for this. I'm just constantly going up, up, up. Grab that waypoint and then keep going up and to the left. And this should be the entrance to the quarry right over here. Yeah, we did it. The quarry. Now for the quarry, I usually go straight, grab this waypoint, head here. Now we need to do the quest where we get the Sakima feather, which we use to get a pass point. And then there's also going to be the refinery. We need to do that to get the infernal telk or whatever to open up the belly of the beast. This area, I normally just go around the edges. Usually the feather is on the left and refineries on the right, but sometimes the feather spawns on the right as well, I think. This area is jam-packed with rares and magic mobs, so it's not an area I feel bad getting lost in or spending a lot of time in. But here's the Shrine of the Winds. Like I said, sometimes it'll spawn somewhere different. And then once I've got that, I'll head directly up to find the refinery, which is usually around here. If it's not Reb, magic pack, magic pack, lots of XP. And here is the refinery. The refinery has an excellent trick that's very easy to remember. There are these train tracks on the ground. You want to follow these ones going up as much as possible. These will lead you straight to the boss. If it goes in a building, follow it. But don't follow the ones going down. Try to follow the ones going more up and to the left and then it'll turn off this direction. It's going to keep going this way. Follow the train tracks, follow the train tracks. And here is the boss. So remember, follow them train tracks. Now entering Act 10 in the Ravage Square. Once we've completed the cathedral rooftop, which is pretty much just a straight line. Once we get here, run down these says we're going to do a portal drop. And then we're going to head up this direction to the waypoint outside the ossuary. Don't go straight this way. This is a dead end. I'll show you. There's going to be a bridge, but it's broken. Can't go that way. So normally skip this insertion. I don't know what you call it. Go a bit straight down, run past this one, and then take the next one. This will have a bridge that is fully functional. And then we're going to make that little loop. And then the waypoint for the ossuary will be here. We're going to take this waypoint back to town and then go through our portal and then head down to the control blocks. Again, we're doing this just to prevent backtracking because if we went to the control blocks, we go there, then we would have to run all the way back here or we would have to go back to town and run down there. This way we save any form of backtracking. Now this is a set layout, same as in Act 5. To find the control box, you just want to go all the way down this way. Once you find this hard wall, this roof, I suppose, just keep going down and you will find the entrance to the control blocks. Control blocks is pretty straightforward. I don't even know if it's worth explaining, but you just sort of go straight this way. And then when you find the red fuzzy looking scary light, you go in there and you'll kill the boss. Very straightforward area. And then what are we going to do? Head back to the Ravage Square. Go to the ossuary. And then we want to go to the Torched Courts. Now this is the same layout as in Act 5. 
Torch coats are right over here. I love this little face on the minimap. And the same thing with the torch courts as in Act 5. It's going to follow a sort of clockwise-ish pattern. So just hug the wall. And then when you can't keep going that way, we're going to go down. Or at least down into the right. Lots of doors. Great area. Can't go down any further. So we're going to go down into the left. I am stuck in a wall. Okay, and then a little bit up, this will be the Chamber of Innocence, or the Death Credit Chambers. So same thing with this as an Act 5, sort of follows a bit of a loop. Once you come out of here, out of the Death Credit Chambers, sometimes you can go in a bit this way on the mini-map. Let's have a look. If you go a bit too far down, you can get stuck in this big side area, but just think of it sort of circularly and follow this pattern. That is going to be it for the second half of the video. If you have any other tips, please be sure to let me know in the comments. If you feel like I explained something that could have been explained a bit better or in a way that would have got the point across a little bit better, be sure to let me know. Always open to criticisms that are constructive. But if these are helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. And in the next video, I'm going to be going through some general tips for getting to maps more quickly. These are going to be things that involve planning ahead of time, maybe doing a little bit of practice, but more than just layouts. Layouts do help. These will cut down your time fairly significantly if you do all of them. But what really cuts down time is just a bit of planning. So next video, hopefully out tomorrow, I'll be going over some tips that you can use to help plan and be ready so that you don't waste time along your way to maps. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Stay safe, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.